Have you ever had to name something? Maybe a baby, a car, a business name? Well, the same sort of stress shows up around domain names too. So we're going to talk about how to select the best domain and also how do domain names influence SEO. So there comes a point in time in every business owner's journey where they're going to have to pick a domain. Whether it be a domain for your business, a domain for a hobby, or maybe even a side career. Domain selection is very important. And I think historically, we've just chosen domains based on brand. Our name, mostly. And then we add LLC or INC to it because, yeah, that's what we're supposed to do, right? Well, not necessarily. There are two moments in time when you can change a domain. The first moment is obviously going to be a brand new website. That's always a great moment to think, is the domain name we have right now serving us like it should? Now, if we move to a domain name for SEO, then we have to think about the fact that maybe having what we do in the domain name itself indicates to the searcher as well as to Google what your subject matter expertise is. Now, having keywords in a domain does not help with ranking. I want to be very clear about that. However, it does bold in the search results when someone's searching for that keyword. Take a look at the domain name you have right now. If the domain name has a dash, I want you to consider that maybe that's a bit of a vulnerability for you because there's another domain out there without the dash that matches that as well. So if you have a domain with a dash, please try to purchase the one without the dash just to protect your brand. And I've also seen competitors go in and buy those dashes or non-dashed variants and point them to their websites, which is a big icky. You don't want that to happen to you. So let's step back. If, you, if you're thinking about a point in time when you could rebrand, like my client, Hydrotech, they are going to rebrand from this other unfindable name to hydrotestingpros.com. Hydrotest gets 250,000 searches a month. So it is a very relevant, specific keyword that's in their domain. Now that's not necessarily going to help with ranking, but what it does do is it puts you right in front of the searcher who is searching for that phrase. And if you've optimized the page for that hydro test, there's an excellent chance that, that you're going to rank for that. And then of course, then they see your domain name and they're like, oh, those are Hydrotech pros. I get it. You're the, you're the guys I need to go to. So as opposed to Aqua Tech, I don't I can't even say it. I can't remember their domain. It was so convoluted and just don't do that. If you have to like, if when people call you and you say, hey, check out our website and you have to spell it out every time, like my last name, no one spells right. I always have to say L's and Larry, U, T's and Tom, Z's and Zebra, E's and Edward dot com because no one ever pronounces my last name correctly. Ask the person who answers the phones in your office. If they are constantly spelling out your domain, that domain's not working. It's too hard to remember and it's too hard to spell. So if you already have that issue and you probably a lot of you do, think about can you change that? There's a point in time when you go to update a website, you can change that. Now another thing to think about is if you have a crazy hard to spell name, like a lot of lawyers have like, you know, Kowalski and Kaminsky and things like that that are very, very hard to pronounce, then you need to go in and figure out what are all the misspelled variants of that domain because you want to buy the misspellings as well as the correct spellings. Take all the misspellings and trust me, you'll know the misspellings and you point them to the one correct spelling. I own heatherlutz.com as well as heatherlutzy.com as well as findability.com. Now Heather Lutz, singular, without the E, is a reality television star. But that's not me. She's tried to buy the domain a couple times. I say, no, not until I get a good offer, a good enough offer. So there are kind of crazy things. Sometimes like one of my clients is Kay Francis. Let me show you what comes up for her. So she has a problem because when you type in Kay Francis into Google, you get a screen star from the turn of the century, right as the talkies started coming in. And there's no way that Kay is ever going to be able to com compete even with a, you know, a, a, a star that died in the 1930s. So she's not going to be able to budge her way in there and Kay Francis is taken. Another one of my clients, <laughs> She branded her entire company as blah, 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 B-L-A-H, B-L-A-H, B-L-A-H dot U-S. And I'm like, huh? Well, she's a communications expert. And so blah, 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 blah. Right? Does that make sense? Well, 
Not exactly because when you put blah, 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 let me show you. This is awesome, by the way. I wait for these moments. Blah, blah, blah is a song by Kesha. And I am not going to be able to push off Kesha. It's not going to happen. So as it comes, oh, and there's a new video now called Blah, Blah, Blah by Armin Van Buren. Don't know who he is, but his website, the video is actually called Blah, Blah, Blah. Then I come down here and I can see lyrics. I can see Kesha. There she is. I can see two more of those Armin Van Buren's, whatever that is. Urban Dictionary. Oh, I'm scared to ask what that is. Oh, <laughs> man, if you have not been on Urban Dictionary, you need to check it out. It's pretty funny. But obviously, blah, 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 dot net was not, dot US, sorry, was not doing anything for her brand. So we had to rebrand her. So we went to We Do Her website. We looked at all the search volume. We figured out that effective communication had the most amount of search volume. She's like, that's what I talk about, effective communication. So we rebranded her as effectivecommunicationnow.com. And then we redid her brand, her logo, to be the blah, blah, blah. So that she didn't have to walk away from that but she needed to kind of give it a priority. Is that the way you think people are gonna search for you or is that just your little moniker that you've created because you're a marketing genius? The blah, blah, blah was not serving her and she had named her blog B-L-A-H-G, blog, and so her blog wasn't even ranking in Google. So those are kind of the hard messages I get to deliver, yay. So let's talk about domain names and what is the sort of the best practices for domains. First of all, I mentioned it, buyer misspellings, very important to brand recognition, especially if you have a crazy name. Um, secondly, make sure to buy the .net, the .com, and the .org. That is a suite of three that is a sellable asset of your business. So someday when you go to sell your business, they're going to expect that when they buy that, they're going to get the .com, .org, and .net. Now, with that said, don't buy any of the other domain expansions. Don't buy dot roses, dot phone, dot. They don't rank in Google. If you go in and look, 90% of all the domains on the internet are dot coms. There are the outliers. There's still people that are trying to sell the dot this and the dot that. Dot expert was really big with the speaker community or dot speaker. And they all were like rushing to get it. And I'm like, no, 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 stop. You know, take that $15 and go buy yourself something else. But let go of all those domains. So I have a lot of CEOs I work with and they are domain hoarders. They hoard domains. I mean, some of the guys I meet, they have like hundreds and hundreds of domains because they get this great idea. They go to GoDaddy or some domain registrar, they search for it and then they just start buying and buying and buying. I can see them doing it in my sessions. So now I have to say, please don't buy domains during my program. We'll talk about this. But you know, it is prudent at some point to think about, you know what, we're gonna change our name to something that is keyword rich in the domain. So that is very clearly SEO. If I SEO for that keyword in the domain, I'm gonna have a much easier time of ranking for that phrase. So that's a really good way to start. Another way to think about domain names is that you want to own the suite of domains that is based on what you know best. So I, if I had gone back in time and went to the Wayback Machine, which we'll talk about in a minute, I would have bought seotraining.com. Wouldn't that have been a great domain? Yes, it would. But I, at that point, was branding Heather Lutze, which no one spelled my last name right anyway. And then I went to Findability, which was better. I paid four grand for Findability. And some people might be like, oh, no, because it has been the biggest and best decision because people understand what Findability means in most cases. So don't like get in your own way. Don't name a domain something that is unfindable, that's cutesy, that you have to explain every single time someone asks you about that. So think about websites like Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. Every time I tell people about it, I have to tell them about the extra R. That's a problem. And this is a big, I think, a systemic issue in that there's people who think there's a lot of domains left. There's a lot of domains left, tons of domains left. And the .com is the language of business on the internet. You want a .com. .net are for .networks and .orgs are for nonprofits. So if you have a nonprofit arm of your business, use the .org. It has a lot of credibility. Google loves .orgs. And then of course, if you have an education, then a .edu is like the gold standard of domain extensions. So you just want to think about .net, .com, .org. You got to own those. And especially if you're buying a business, if you can't get that suite of three, mm, maybe you can get a better price on the business, but You've got to be able to buy the entire online brand. So make sure that you're really thinking about .net, .com, .org. 
Okay, so let's bump back. So you're like, um, who's got pizza.com? Denverpizza.com. So I'm at a website right now called whois.net. Now whois.net is going to tell me exactly who owns this domain as well as when it comes up for renewal. It used to be you could see their name and their contact information. That has really become a thing of the past because people can privatize their information. So I can tell that it's hosted at GoDaddy. Let's see, yeah, they've pretty much limited every single thing that I can find out. I can find out though when it expires. So the creation date was June of 2000 and it was updated June of 2018. Now, here's some of the crazy things. I had a company that was in one of my trainings and they said, you're never gonna believe this, but we all went on a retreat. It was a di digital detox. We went up in the mountains, no internet, no nothing. The domain name lapsed for the primary company. It just lapsed. No one was keeping an eye on it. No one knew what credit card was attached to it. It just went away. A competitor was in line behind them. So you can actually get in line behind someone who has a domain, and if that domain expires, you can slip in and take it. And that's exactly what happened to a company, is their competitor got their domain, and then they pretty much spent a year, and lawyers got really rich over this now infused battle. So, to protect yourself, always make sure that you've purchased at least two years ahead on your domain. You don't want anyone to get it, and credit cards expire, everyone and you have your, you know, your credit cards on your hosting, your credit cards on your domain, make sure you know when those puppies expire. And also make sure that you own the .net, .com, .org so that you're protecting your brand. Also, you know, like we said, own the misspellings. That protects your brand. So that's a really good way to think about it is just go in and make sure that you've looked up the variants. Now let's just say that we could get denverpizza.com. Great. Now we're gonna go in and we're gonna take a look at what are the other variants that I should consider. So let's go into here and I'm gonna put Denver Pizza. Now here's the crazy thing about domain name searches. GoDaddy is a auction. They auction off domains. Oh, I could buy Denver Pizza for $1,500. That's not bad. If I had a pizza shop, I'd be all over that. Maybe I should call a pizza shop and give them that domain. <laughs> but that's a good domain. I'd spend $1,500 for that. Anyway, Denver Pizza is a great option. But you have to remember that when we are doing domain names, it's important to remember that we not only want a keyword rich domain, but we also want to make sure that it is available and that we can leverage it properly. So there might be a brand URL, which is like findability.com, and then there might be what we call a secondary domain, which might be like seotraining.com. And you could have, so what's important to understand is that a domain name for the business, your business card can have your name on it. Your website has the logo on it. Your business cards, your um, brochures, all has your name on it. But the domain doesn't necessarily have to be your company name. Maybe the domain actually shows up as a keyword phrase that you are bestdenverpizza.com. You get to say you're the best, then you are. So if you put best in your logo, you put pros in your domain, then all of a sudden people are like, oh, they're the best and they're pros? So think about how can I stack the cards in my favor by buying a domain that has these great keywords in it that says who we are. It doesn't say who we are, it says what we do, how good we are. So if you're affordable, look at an affordable domain. Now what's interesting about domain companies like eBay, GoDaddy, there's a bunch of different sites that are auction models. We want to go into something called incognito. Now you've probably heard about this before, but I'm gonna go over it again because it's so important. So let's go onto my screen here. We're gonna take a look at, in Chrome specifically, we're gonna go under File and New Incognito Window. Here's the deal. If I go into GoDaddy and type in Denver Pizza, and then I go back in and type in Best Denver Pizza, it's all being saved in my cash and cookies. So when I go back into GoDaddy the next day, that $12 domain has now become a $4,000 domain. They flag it as premium because they see that you've been there before. So incognito is great when you're searching for airplane tickets, when you're searching for concert tickets, because they're auction models. They know you've been there before. So if you're looking for a concert ticket, you find great seats, great timing, and then you go back the next day and the prices are tripled, it's because they know you've been there before. So remember that whenever you're searching for anything that's an auction model, domain names, um, airline tickets, concert tickets, be in incognito so they can't get you on a higher price the next time you go back.
Just a little tip and a trick there. I say GoDaddy because they're the biggest domain registrars. Um, I don't really care where you host it as long as you host it somewhere that is reliable. GoDaddy does a great job. Just don't buy all their extras. They try to, it's like they sell you the domain and the kitchen sink and the tub and the car in the garage and the two dogs. They sell you everything. You don't want all that. You just want the domain. Okay, so we talked about making sure that misspellings, we talked about making sure no dashes, keyword rich domain, the .net, .com, and .org, and of course, making sure that if you're gonna look for a new domain, that they are incognito when you're searching. So let's just say I wanna come in here and I'm gonna say bestdenverpizza.com. Now on my screen, you'll see that it's taken. But if I gone in there and I'm like, okay, well, maybe I could do denverpizzaexperts.com. So here's my trick. When you are looking for a keyword like Denver Pizza and you can't afford that domain, add experts, add best, add pros to the domain. So it's still, you're still anchoring in it in the way that people think but then you're adding on a little bit of a specialization or a, a declaration that we are the best, right? Oh, we're the best, we get five stars, yay, people love us. But just because you can get to say you're the best, it's fine. So when you're looking for best pizza expert or Denver pizza expert, that's the money because now anyone types in Denver pizza or pizza experts or even pizza pros, pizza gurus, I don't care what you put on the end, but it does give a certain leveling up of the fact this is not just pizza, this is the best pizza. Like you get to be declarative, like here we are, if you're not even here, you're crazy. And then you build the whole website underneath there. Now the trick with SEO and domain names is that yes, you can put the keywords in it. It's not necessarily gonna help you with SEO specifically, but it makes your domain relevant for that keyword, very important. Secondly, if you're gonna buy a domain, make sure that you are buying ahead. Remember, we have to buy at least two years ahead, if not longer, on that primary domain. Another thing is your personal name. Make sure you buy the names of you and all your kiddos, because those are valuable to them. And we don't want someone else getting those domains. So go in and just buy them, hold on to them, your board of directors. You may want to also consider buying the domain names of your board of directors, especially your CEO. If your CEO has been there forever, um, I had a gentleman who got in a lot of trouble and we've been trying to do brand reputation management. He got off and it was all cleared, but man alive, his name was just smeared across the internet. Believe it or not, there was two people in the same city that had the same name. One was a CEO of a major company, one was a registered sex offender and they both had the same exact name. So sort of like Kay Francis, but worse. So how do we, so every time you Googled him, theirs was a sex offender record. So people of course thought that that was his, that's not okay. So we went in and we bought a bunch of different domains. We bought his name, charity work. We bought his name, community work. So we were able to build a series of domain names that ultimately pushed off registered sex offender to page two but it took over a year to do this. If you are an expert, a speaker, a trainer, where your name is everything to you, buy your domain and the misspellings, .net, .tom, and .org. And let's just talk about a minute for, do not go in and buy other competitor domains. Don't buy other people, other domains. It's a waste of your money and you're just opening yourself up for a lawsuit. I get a lot of people that kind of just go in and buy that domain sucks and you know, then you know, point it to my site. I'm like, no because you're just asking for trouble. You know, don't poke the snake, leave it alone. Just worry about your own stuff and don't try to slander or make it negative with your competitors. Just leave it alone. And a lot of, I get a lot of those questions, especially CEOs are like, how can I get that guy, right? How can I take him down? And I'm like, no, do not buy any of his domains. So now you've got a crash course on domains. Post in the comments below, what questions do you have about domains? I'm happy to answer any of those. Hit the subscribe button and the bell button so you know about my videos every day. Oh yeah, the bell button. Oh, thank you for that, that was awesome. Anyway, I love my bell. So um, make sure to subscribe. If you like this content, I do a video every day. So stay tuned and we'll see you on the next video.